Let's start with a story. Two 30-something-year-old baseball fans at a Mets game, New York, 1984. It's old Shea Stadium. It's the Cincinnati Reds versus the New York Mets. A foul ball is hit to the section where those two fans are sitting, and one of those 30-something-year-olds reaches right in front of a young boy, also on the hunt for a baseball souvenir. The older man, the 30-something-year-old, grabs the ball, starts walking back to his seat, just kind of shrugs. The little boy starts crying. This being New York, some fans notice this scene, and they start getting on the 30-year-old, give the ball to the kid. Give the kid the ball. <laughs> give the kid the ball. The chant just gets louder and louder. The fan shakes his head no. Soon the whole stadium is rocking this chant. <laughs> give the kid the ball. Eventually, security personnel come, escort this fan away right before he actually does give the ball back to the little kid. But there's another side to this story. It turns out that this 30-something-year-old fan, his nephew, was in the hospital with cancer. And he said to his uncle before the game, can you get me a foul ball? This fan told his wife this story, wallowing in how he had and then lost the baseball. This story is 100% true. And I'm a lifelong New York Mets fan. But I was not there that day. The little boy in the story is not me. Yet I read that story in a newspaper. I read it in Newsday, Long Island, the daily newspaper on Long Island, New York, where I grew up. The newspaper's famous feature columnist, Ed Lowe, had heard about the give the kid the ball chant. And like a good reporter, he thought, hmm, what's the other side to this story? I loved reading Ed Lowe. I read newspapers every day growing up. I read his columns, I read news sections, sports, business, all of it. And now I'm the editor of a paper where I write and oversee content. I love the puzzle of figuring things out and putting it into clear and concise stories to inform and inspire readers. I've been in this industry for 25 years, long enough to be part of a significant shift in how the print newspaper industry connects with its readers. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. How print legacy newspaper companies make the transition to a digital first mindset. Or don't be a dinosaur. So let's start with defining the challenges and obstacles. And that is this. From the first published newspaper in America in 1689, public occurrences both foreign and domestic, to the newspaper wars of New York City in the early 1900s, to basically the 1990s, the print newspaper industry had one method of connecting with its readers, and that was a print newspaper. Remember the Sunday paper? It was as thick as a brick, and super profitable for newspaper companies as well. The news was counted off in sections by letter to A, F, or G. Classified ads filled the paper for anybody who needed anything, jobs, bicycles, whatever. If you wanted to sell anything from cars to couches, you took out big, bright, colorful ads in the paper. The newspaper was how people connected with other people, and it's how businesses connected with customers. It's how the phrase, I saw it in the paper, became ubiquitous. Then along came the internet, and that changed everything. Soon, people could connect with other people easier, faster, and much cheaper. Craigslist and eBay.com decimated the classified industry. So what started in the 1990s as a slow burn, melding print with digital, grew rapidly in the 2000s. And by the 2010s, and then really by the pandemic, the amount of people who get their news over from print newspaper as opposed to digital sources has significantly changed. The problem for print newspaper companies is it costs a lot of money to produce all this content. You have to pay all the reporters, the editors, and more. But the revenue model of what you can charge for an ad for a print newspaper, as opposed to what you can charge for something digitally online, is not nearly as profitable as the old days. Another big challenge for print newspapers is when they first started going digital, they didn't charge any money for their websites. So soon people realized you can get all this content for free online. Why am I paying 50 cents or $1.50 for something that just takes up space in my life? 
The amount of people who say, I love the feel of a newspaper in my hands in the morning with a cup of coffee. Yeah, there used to be enough of them to fill up Nebraska. Now there's barely enough to fill up a phone booth in Rhode Island. <laughs> How bad is the decline in print newspapers? There were 56 million subscribers to daily newspapers in the United States in the year 2000. By 2020, that number had fallen to 24.2 million, according to a report in Editor and Publisher and the Pew Research Center. And on the revenue side, it's been just as bad. In 2020, newspapers took in $22.1 billion in print advertising. That's down from $46.2 billion in 2002. It's important to point out that many other industries are grappling with similar digital revolution challenges. Think printed books versus eBooks, Netflix versus movie theaters, CDs versus Apple Music and Amazon Prime Music. Or go back a bit. Remember Kodak? The digital camera was the first of many wax that took out what was an American and global business giant. Even things we thought would never go online and go digital, well, they went digital. Think about in the pandemic, museums started offering online tours for people who couldn't get out of the house. And schools started hosting show and tell for second graders over Zoom. So it's clear, newspapers need to go digital. Digital, digital, digital. We call it digital first in the newsroom that I work in. So the big question, how do you get there? How do you change directions when you've been going one direction for so long? Well, first is to know your why. Know your North Star. Figure out your audience. Is it C-suite executives and business owners? Is it sports fans? Is it political junkies? Then figure out how do they want to read their content? Do they want to read it on their phone, their tablet, a desktop? Next, start creating content like you never had print to fall back on in the first place. Think about things you could only do online. You could do online databases. You could produce videos that are relevant to your audience or start a podcast. One key to all this is to remember the cliche is true. Content is king. Well-written stories, well-reported stories will always rise to the top. Like the story about a 30-something-year-old fan chasing foul ball glory at a Mets game. Longtime New York Times publisher Arthur Sulzberger Jr. has a great line for the newspaper's digital revolution. He says, print newspapers cannot be defined by the second word, print. They need to be defined by the first word, news. Thomas Jefferson also has a great line about newspapers. He says, were it left to me to decide if I'd rather have government without newspapers or newspapers without a government, I should not hesitate a moment to prefer the latter. These are both strong, hit them over the head reminders for legacy print newspaper companies that when going digital, content matters. I'm often asked, is there a future for print newspapers? 10 years ago, 100%, I would have said yes. Five years ago, maybe, but the window is closing. Today, I say online or print, it doesn't matter. You have to give readers the content they want when they want it. Thank you.